the best president Biden, meanwhile, is counting on union support to help him win in some critical states, among them Michigan. The president already secured an endorsement from the United Auto Workers in January, but that may not translate into union votes this November. From the latest installment of our series, we call it the Deciders Focus Group, produced in collaboration with Engages, Syracuse University, and SAG, we heard from Michigan voters who are either in unions or have family members in unions about how that may influence who they support this fall. I would say former President Trump's policies are pro-union. None of you. So Deborah, help me with this. He's not pro-union, but you'd support him in the next election. T t t tell me why. Because I think he's pro-worker. I think he knows how to get jobs out there. I, you know, this taxing the rich and everything, that's all great, except for the rich are the ones that provide the jobs. If you tax them too much, they're going to go to another country and there will be no jobs. I agree with what Deborah said. I do. I think he's... More about the worker, workers as a whole, not just the union. So, who would say President Biden's policies are pro union? Five of you. Just in the last few years, I've watched our uh, bargaining power become stronger. The right to work laws are starting to get repealed, and our salaries are going up. He's starting to listen to us. I'm starting to feel like our uh, voices are being heard and that we're not in danger of like losing our jobs or, you know, even having like unions getting dissolved. I just feel like he's publicly made his support of unions known. He's he's not afraid to uh, to support us in the open. NBC News White House, excuse me, Washington correspondent Yamiche Alcindor. I see her at the White House on occasions. Yamiche, nice to see you at least in person today. That was kind of remarkable to hear those words from these individuals, union families, union members, and their reaction there. Why did they say that their sort of union connection may not actually play a role in their choice? Well, it's a it's a good question because you have President Biden calling himself over and over again the most pro-union president in history. And you also have former President Trump courting unions. But what we learned from this focus group was that they're not a cohesive voting bloc, mainly because they're worried about a number of other things like abortion or the economy or housing. So they don't see the union as the defining thing that's going to make them vote for one candidate over the other. The other thing that was really interesting is that there's really a political divide between the union leadership and the rank and file. And they said in, in a number of cases that when they looked at their union leaders, they thought they were motivated by money or by politics. Mm. They were at times complaining about the fact that they only, that most of the time they backed Democrats. So you had some Trump supporters saying, my union leaders don't really want to talk about the, the candidate that I want to support. So it was very interesting to see, but really they just don't see unions as the number one thing on their list. Well, the biggest takeaway from what you said, right, is that these are not a monolith. These union voters, union family member voters here, these guys were in Michigan, these men and women with whom uh, they spoke recently. But the issue that was key to them had nothing to do with what's going on in Michigan in terms of border uh, union issues. It had to do with the border, a big national issue right now. That's right. When you look at this group, 15 people, seven of them said they were voting for President Biden, six for, for, for former President Trump. Two said that if it was a two-way race, they wouldn't vote. But on the issue mm. of the border, they were cohesive. So people who were literally yelling at each other last night at this focus group, when it came to the border, they all got together. So take a listen to what they said. Who's concerned about the situation at America's southern border? Joe Fingers, who's concerned about the situation at America's southern border? Six of you. Colleen, what concerns you? Uh, we need to think about us first. We're, we're at odds with our own country. We need to be focusing on our own people, not letting in people that are not even part of this country. They're getting social security and benefits that I can't even get, even being an unemployed person in this country. And it just makes me angry. And I never used to feel that way. I was like straight liberal, as liberal as you could get years ago. But the more I see, the more my eyes are opening. Like, it just makes me sick. You all live in Michigan. You're more than a thousand miles from the Southern Texas border. Why is that border such a big issue for you? It is taxing the resources of the entire country. It doesn't, um, it doesn't matter what state you're in, in my opinion, it's, it's, um, it's a huge strain on financially on all the resources that we have. 
it affects everything. The drugs are still getting to Michigan. The mm -hmm. crime is still coming to Michigan. Mm -hmm. I mean, a thousand miles does is nothing to these, these kind of criminals. They they travel wherever. They're well organized and they're well funded. There's a lot to break down from all of this. First of all, most fentanyl goes through border crossings as opposed to between those border crossings. But those are really revealing views that a lot of these folks have about this issue, including the first lady who said she's very liberal, presumably a Democrat, but said on this issue she has real concerns right now. I want to ask you quickly, the president, his argument is, hey, there's a bipartisan border deal. This is the most Mitch McConnell was on board with this thing. Even the border union supported this and they endorse Donald Trump. Does it do, does any of that resonate with these individuals? It really just goes by their partisan um, view of the world. So if you're a supporter of President Biden, you see that him, you see him really trying to do something on the border. But if you're someone who's supporting former President Trump, you see him as being weak on the border, even with that border security package. I want to just double score, really underscore the fact that two of the men in that, there was Larry and Paul, they were just really arguing all night long. I watched this for th three hours last night. <laughs> they were arguing with each other. When it came to the border, they literally just started saying the exact same things, echoing each other's languages, talking about the fact that Democrats and Republicans, they need to get together and fix the border issue. And it was really telling that they said in Michigan, they're like, yes, we're a thousand miles away from the border, but the fentanyl, the crime, all of yeah. that comes to this state. So really, really telling. Three hours of uh, watching focus groups. It's a big, big Wednesday night for the Alcindor family last <laughs> yeah. night. You're a good sport listening to it, but they have some really revealing things to share. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.